Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Karur. Or is it Karur? The recorded station announcements on the trains say Karur, but then that lady used to say Weemus Bay instead of Weems Bay. The ticket inspector said Karur, so who knows, but we're here anyway. I was here a year ago and I featured some of the, the shorter walks around the station because this is, after all, the most remote station in the UK. The only way you can get here is to walk 20 miles, to cycle, or to catch the train like I did. But when I was here last year, I discovered something. You can stay that signal box up there. How cool is that? And that's where I'm staying tonight. Now this is the most expensive room I've ever booked in my life, and it will probably be the most expensive room I book in my life at 180 pounds a night. But that doesn't include breakfast. And what's the big deal? Well, I do know of at least one other signal box in the UK. It's in Northern England. And I believe you can stay there. This signal box is actually on a, on a dismantled railway line. This is a live operating station and you can actually stay in the signal box. How seriously cool. Now, I should point out there's only three rooms here. They've been on sale for four days and already they've taken the rooms off sale for the rest of the season up until the 2nd of November. That's how popular this is. I'll tell you, it is bitter today. I am shaking. Woo. And even my St. Mirren hat is going to keep me warm. Right. To make things a little more interesting, I've given myself a challenge. Between now and lunchtime tomorrow, when I'm returning back to Glasgow, there are seven trains that pass through the station. And I have their times on this bit of cardboard. And the challenge is to try and film all seven trains. Two of which are Caledonian sleepers. Now the first of the trains is the southbound at 12.30. It's just gone 11.20 now. So I'm going to go into the station there, get a cup of tea, maybe a sandwich, warm up, and try and catch the first of the trains. Oh boy, it's cold. The actual uh, ticket inspector was answering some questions with there was a couple of tourists coming off. And they said, why do people come to Karur? And she says, don't know, you're in for a treat. Oh boy. To be honest, it's not as snowy as I thought it was going to be. At one point there was four, they were forecasting about 20 centimeters of snow. Hasn't quite happened. That cheese and ham toast he did the job, I'll tell you, and a cup of tea as well. Also managed to get my uh, room key about 30 minutes before check-in, so that's a bonus. Uh, signing the snow, I have established one thing. This place is called Karour, not Karour. I think Karour is more of a Glaswegian-y kind of uh, pronunciation. It's Karour according to the locals. Right, let's get checked into my room. I want to drop this bag off, then I want to catch the, uh, the 12.30 coming through the station. This is my room, but I'll give you a guided tour later on. I need to get out there to catch this 12.30 southbound. It's definitely not as cold as it was when I arrived just, what, 45 minutes ago. It was bitter. When I was trying to do the introduction, my hands were shaking. That's why I kept changing from a left hand to a right hand. It was so cold. But now it's almost tropical. And it's snowing. Just up here, and I can see it already, there's a sign to indicate the highest point on the West Highland Line. And I would like to try and get the 12.30 southbound train passing that sign. That's the plan anyway. I was asking the lady at the front desk um, about availability. Because I booked this about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. It's now been taken off the market totally chock-a-block to the end of the season. And I said, is that normal? And she says, well, this year has been particularly busy. Last year has been particularly busy. Before that, hmm, 
but she said they do get cancellations but uh, you can't actually check a grid online now to see what's available or not you have to email in and if you're lucky you might get a date otherwise you'll have to wait till next year and here we are I was hoping to get closer to the track but there's a bit of a swamp there and um, I don't want to give a driver a heart attack by standing right at the edge of the tracks hmm what are we going to do here whoa whoa 12.26, time to get into position. I can hear the train away in the distance. Okay. Train one of seven captured. That actually went better than I expected. According to my bit of cardboard here, the next train is the northbound at 1524. Three hours to kill. I may go for a little walk, a little walk in that direction towards the youth hostel, but not too far because it's, well, not great hiking weather really, is it? It's snowing. But uh, it's either that or I sit in my room or I sit in the, uh, the coffee shop, which actually isn't that bad. Now, I think I'll go for a little walk Right, see you along the way. I did mention it briefly back there, but because it's so quiet here, you can hear the train miles away. And I think I first heard that about five minutes before it was due to arrive, I could hear a distant rumble. So that makes it easier when you know it's actually coming and you can get into position quickly. Right, I'm just looking up at the station there and about a dozen people have gotten off the train. I am curious to find out how many people get on and off the Caledonian sleeper. When I came up with this fantastic idea of trying to get seven trains in 24 hours, I thought, oh, wait a minute, what time does the Caledonian sleeper pass? It was actually quite civilized. Uh, the southbound is at 20.52 tonight. That's not too bad. That's just before my bedtime. And uh, the northbound tomorrow morning, 8.58, corresponds with breakfast. But I'm curious to see how many people get off this train from London. Despite the cold wind and the snow, which isn't actually lying, which is a good thing, I am actually having a good time. It's just becoming very, very bitter again. Uh, very bleak, look at that. Absolutely nothing, apart from the station way back there. This is amazing scenery, it really is. Okay, I've decided to head back to the station. I got about halfway to the youth hostel, which isn't very far really but uh, it is getting very cold. And although I'm wearing lots of layers, I didn't bring any gloves because I've got pockets, you know? But I'll just head back because uh, like I said, oh boy, the temperature has dropped significantly since the snow started. Yeah, so out of the three rooms, the other two rooms have got south facing windows where you can get a good view of that mountain. But my room being a posh one, has a view of the mountain, but also a view heading east. So I can see some of the trains, but photographing some of the trains off my uh, list from my room window would be a bit of a cop out. I might do one, but I'm certainly not gonna sit there and photograph them all from my window. That's very handy when completing the seven train challenge. It tells me whether the trains are on time. So the one this afternoon is running two minutes late. They must have already left Malik, that's why they know it's running late. Right, let me show you the, the room. And I'll also show you the lounge. It's not a huge room by any means, but you are paying for the uniqueness. Do you want a guided tour? Let's do this. A double bed. Side table. With a whole water bottle. You might need that in the middle of winter. Breakfast menu. Breakfast is included. A table on this side as well. No USBs. This is the east facing window. You get a panoramic view of the wind turbine. This is the other view, which is a little bit better. Yeah. 
Did I mention the kettle? I'll be brewing that up very, very shortly. Not one radiator, but two radiators. And let's have a look at the bathroom now. Small but functional. Wash and basin, toilet, shower. You can get a view here. Unfortunately, there's a blind here if you want to pull it down. A nice touch there. Wild nettle and heather handmade natural soap. Hmm. And here we have got similar brands of conditioner and shampoo. And that's what you get for 180 a night. But it must be worth it because they're sold out now until November. Upstairs is the lounge. Shall we go and explore that? One of the benefits of a really nice room like this is you get free Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, shared Wi-Fi is the easiest way for a hacker to get access to your sensitive data. That's why I use Surfshark, and that's why they're sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is a VPN, or a virtual private network. Surfshark encrypts all of your data between your device and the internet, ensuring no one can steal your personal information. I know a few people who have had their social media accounts hacked. Also, I'm very, very bad. I've got a bad habit of using Google to save my passwords, so when I access websites which I use on a regular basis, it pre-populates the information. Can you imagine the fun and games that someone could have if they could access my phone or my laptop? That's where Surfshark comes to the rescue. Another thing I love about Surfshark is the fact that you can access UK TV when you're overseas, and also access overseas TV when you're in the UK. I recently wanted to watch Australian news on the ABC, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Unfortunately, I get a message reminding me I'm not down under. By simply changing my IP address with Surfshark to an Australian one, the ABC website now thinks I'm in Perth, Western Australia, and now I have unrestricted access. Oh no. Cricket. The Wacker Hilton Cartwright was him earlier, lucky not to injure himself, he smashed into a fence, but the Tigers will resume. On Another soon. benefit of Softshark is the fact that one account covers unlimited devices, which means your entire household will be protected. To ensure your privacy with Softshark, just click the link in the description below and you get an extra three months free. Or you can scan this very large QR code. And don't forget, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so if you're not happy, you've got nothing to lose. So thank you Surfshark for protecting me and for sponsoring this video. I'm not sure what this little room's for. It looks like a storage area. or oh, it's a linen place for the, uh, the cleaners. Right. Just that I did see some people in there earlier and I thought, surely that can't be one of their rooms. Okay, these, as you can see, they're not disabled friendly. But then this is a, a listed building, isn't it? Oh, this is nice. This is nice. This is very nice. How beautiful is this? I did notice there was no TV, so you play Connect 4 on Monopoly. Okay. And I like that touch as well, a blanket, just in case it gets too chilly here. The views out the windows are brilliant. Look at that. And on the other side, again, the wind turbine view but with a bit of extra scenery this time. It smells of paint, so I think they might have actually uh, given the place the once over during the off season. I'm wondering why there were people in there. Can you actually get in there? Let's find out. What a funny little room. Yeah, it's a storage area for linen, vacuum cleaner, a fridge. 
Ooh, with complimentary drinks. I might actually take an iron brew. I'll be Scottish. I'll take an iron brew. Extra towels if you need them. But it's really warm in here. Really warm. That was a late running 1524 northbound. Right, I might go for a little walk because it's starting to clear up a bit. The next train is the 1825 southbound, so I've got under three hours. So I'm going to go for a walk up there. Not up to the summit, however. In fact, this reminds me of when I was here last year. There was a guy who I nicknamed Red Backpack Man. And he walked up there and disappeared. And I never did see him again. I hope he was safe. Right, let's get across this fence. It's actually turning into quite a pleasant afternoon. Blue sky and everything. And the temperature is not too bad actually, not too bad at all. Before it was bitter. And here's the bridge from train spotting. There's no defined track up here, so I'm not going to risk it because getting up is okay, but coming down could be a bit treacherous. I don't know where I would end up. And there's some seriously boggy areas here, like this one I'm walking through right now. <sighs> so, I might end up going up that way. I did actually try and walk up that way last year, but it was seriously boggy as well. We'll see how far we can get. So what can I tell you about my hotel room? Well, it is quiet. And the only thing I really hear is the of the, the wind turbine, but apart from that, quiet. Uh, there's no TV, probably because you can't get a signal out here because you're in the middle of nowhere. And the Wi-Fi, although it is free, is a little bit hit and miss. So when it does work, make the most of it because it could go down very shortly, but then it comes up again. I remember last year when I looked at this particular road uh, on Ordon survey maps, it showed as if it went a feral distance and in fact, based on those signs back there, you can walk to Kinlochleven and also uh, Fort William and Speen Bridge. But I also remember this kind of fizzled out after about 500 metres into a swamp. So I wonder what it looks like now. It's been uh, upgraded a little bit. It's had some more gravel and rocks and things laid on it. So it's not as bad as I recall so far anyway. I checked the menu online to see what kind of food they had for dinner and um, to be honest some of the prices were well a bit pricey and considering I'm paying 180 quid just for the room plus return train fare I gotta watch the budget here and I thought now nah, it's a budget breaker if I have to buy a meal there as well because I think just fish and chips are about 14 pounds over and above that you've sold the cost of a drink and stuff and I thought yeah I understand why it's so expensive, however, 
So I brought some snacks with me, they'll keep me going tonight. And I think it's probably going to be an early night as well because, like I said, there's no TV and the Wi-Fi is hit and miss. Yeah, this is all starting to look a bit familiar. This is where the road goes downhill fast. Mind you, here, on Ordnance Survey Maps, that shows a track or a road that goes kind of halfway up that hill there. This one here basically turns into a swamp. Let's go up that way, just for a laugh, see what happens. I remember this. Yeah, that's where the... Uh, the road actually ends and the rest is just basically a quagmire, although there is a track. Eh, uh, do you reckon I should go up that hill there? That little one? Yeah, let's do it. Right, whose idea was it to go up this little hill? It's all muddy and swampy. Ah, we're there now. From here I can see where the road winds its way up, halfway up that hill there. Although it doesn't look very formed, it looks like a swamp. And there's supposed to have been a road which led that way, but that just turns into a swamp as well. Hmm. There's a station way over there somewhere. Okie dokie, if you can survive the boggy bit, and I've just kind of done a big, big loop around it, you end up on a kind of a track like this. And the scenery is very, very pretty. When I was on top of that little hill back there, I'm pretty sure I saw someone coming over in this direction wearing shorts. Right. Uh, this could be the point of uh, the point of return. Look at this. Yep, this is as far as we're going. It's just far too boggy. I'd have to walk all the way over there and then somehow loop around this bit. That looks like a swamp as well. Back onto the track, and who knows what's on the other side of this hill. Now, it's just not getting any better, so we'll head back. Well, I can report that that guy that was wearing the shorts has vanished. There's absolutely no sign of him anywhere. And I think this must be kind of some kind of a Bermuda Triangle kind of thing. Where do all these people go? I wouldn't want to be out there uh, too late with shorts on. It's going to get cold tonight. Right, ladies and gentlemen, don't panic. I found the guy wearing the shorts. I just stood there for a couple of minutes and I just scanned very slowly the whole landscape. And there he was, away in the distance, and it looks as if he's coming back. So obviously a bit of common sense has uh, kicked in. Right, so what are we going to do? Because we've still got two hours to go before the next train. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to head towards the youth hostel again, because at least it's a sealed road. Because you can't go this way during March and April, it's just too, too boggy. So here I am thinking, what a relatively pleasant afternoon, considering what it was like when I arrived. And then I see down the glen there, there's a very low-lying, white, greyish cloud coming towards us. And I think that could be rain or possibly snow coming. And the wind's picking up as well, and I can feel the temperature dropping. Yeah, we're in for a change. As Billy Connolly says, if you don't like the weather in Scotland, just wait 20 minutes. It's just over there. That's something you don't see too often around here. An actual vehicle heading towards Carrara Railway Station. So it's obviously owned either by the estate or the employees who work at the, uh, the station itself. I'm keeping an eye on that cloud down in the glen there. It's still there, it's obscuring the whole glen, but it doesn't seem to be getting any closer, and yet the wind is blowing directly at me. Hmm, very strange. 
I do think that if it gets here, we're in for rain or snow, that's for sure. But we should be at the youth hostel in around about 10 minutes. I was here a year ago at this very spot and I saw this bench and I thought, how nice would it be to be able to sit here at sunset, watching the sun go down, having a beer? No, I came back in March, didn't I? Whew. It is a lovely spot though. I'm looking at that cloud away over there again. It still hasn't moved. It must be the, the winds blowing the moisture over a hill and it's forming clouds there. They're not coming in this direction for some reason. I have a confession to make. Not only did I bring snacks for my room tonight, I also bought a bottle of Peroni. I just thought about that then because I saw this bench or these two benches and I thought, summertime, Peroni, sunset, yeah. Also, that also means midges. I never thought of that. This place would be rife with midges in the middle of summer. Oh. I've got a train to catch, photographically, you know. So yeah, I might start heading back now. I just looked behind me, that cloud seems to have disappeared now. A strange weather in Scotland. I was also thinking as well, no TV tonight and intermittent Wi-Fi. I must have known what to expect because I brought something to read, I brought a magazine with me and a whole load of podcasts. I always bring podcasts uh, because you just never know how much time you're going to be spending at an airport, on a train, or just stuck in a hotel in Carrer. What kind of podcasts? Well, Simon Calder, I always download his to listen to later. A um, couple of YouTube ones, and basically commercial aviation news, that kind of stuff. All very travel stuff, boring stuff, you know. That's what I'll be doing tonight. Total silence, which makes this a really good opportunity to do a shout out to John, Natalie and Luke. Hi Luke. John, Natalie and Luke are subscribers and followers of the channel. I really do appreciate their support. Thanks very much guys. Be like Luke and give me a thumbs up. The next train is the 1825 southbound. I've got about 55 minutes to wait, so I might head into the, uh, the room and get that kettle going. Not before I check to see if it's on time. It's a whole two minutes late. Right, 1825 southbound. Let's get out there. Right, let's go. I hope you're still watching, Luke. This one's for you. Needless to say, no one got off the train and I was the only one on the platform actually filming it. There you go. Everyone's heading back to Glasgow now. How cool is this little shed though? Twenty fifty two, that's the next train we're waiting for, the Caledonian sleeper.
let's get inside. It's becoming quite a nasty night. I just quickly came up to the lounge. I just wanted to see if these lights here actually worked and they do because later on when it's dark I want to stand over there and try and get an atmospheric nighttime shot of the uh, signal box. Right, let's get back into the room and get that kettle on. Train number four, according to my piece of cardboard, is the 2052 southbound Caledonian sleeper. And that's due in about 10 minutes. Well, that nearly caught me off guard. Caledonian sleeper operating four minutes early. It didn't stop, it just went uh, past, but at least I got away from the driver. <laughs> the next train is the 2120 northbound, and that'll be the last one of the day until tomorrow morning when it's a Caledonian sleeper again. Right, I'm going to head into the room um, because I'm going to get my glasses. It's actually cleared up. And I want to see how many stars I can see. Right, there's something you don't see every day, me wearing glasses. If anything, I usually wear contact lenses. I don't think I've worn glasses on a video since I did the end-to-end -end journey, 2019. Right, I'm going to have to find somewhere really dark, because I want to see if I can see the Milky Way. I can definitely see a mass of stars, but... Uh, they're not as sharp as they could be because I think there's a, a kind of a very light haze tonight But definitely more stars than I would see back in Paisley, that's for sure Okay, that's all the fun for today. That's the last train of the day. I'll see you in the morning at around about 8 a.m. See you then. Good morning, everybody. Plan of action was for the alarm to go off at 8 a.m. I actually woke at six. It's now 7.15. Um, it's windy out there. It's not blowing a hoolie, but it is windy and it's the rattling of the windows and the howling of the wind that woke me up. Uh, the bed was a good bed, but as per usual with me, I never sleep well for night number one in a strange bed, so I'm pretty tired, but I'm gonna have a shower. The Caledonian sleeper is due through here at 8.58, so what I might do is have the shower, go out to see if it's on time. I don't think it's gonna be affected by the wind. It just sounds a lot windier than it really is because it's an old building and it's kind of rattling a bit. So I will see you once I've had a shower. This is the first time I've ever had coffee in a bag. Let's see what it tastes like. Surprisingly not bad. Okay, first train of the day is scheduled at 8.58 and it's the Caledonian sleeper northbound to Fort William. I've just, against all odds, managed to get um, some Wi-Fi and uh, it's on time. Not bad at all, not bad. I forgot to mention, I was listening to my last podcast last night. It was around about 11 p.m. and I thought, let's get to bed. And uh, suddenly the place started to rumble. I thought, why is that rumbling noise? It was a locomotive going straight past my window. I tell you what, I nearly had heart failure. I'm guessing it was one of the two locomotives that was hauling the southbound Caledonian sleeper. It must return back to Fort William, but I had no idea what that noise was. Wow, it was loud. First things first, I thought I'd maybe do a bit of a review of my stay here 
inside instead of outside because it's blown a hoolie. Taylor's of Harrogate, good coffee, really good coffee. Better than this other brand that they give you as well. Right, what can I tell you about the hotel? Well, the damage was £180 a night, which is very, very expensive for me. Definitely expensive for a hotel room. Um, I would describe this as barely three star. Uh, the shower was very good, but it's so cramped in there. So cramped, you can hardly get moving. Um, no TV, not their fault because there's just no reception, but hey, I'm comparing it with other three star hotels and the Wi-Fi intermittent. Uh, I got a message through WhatsApp at 1.30 this morning. It was sent at 8.30 last night. That's how bad it is here. Uh, it looks as if the Carrera Estate and the staff have their own Wi-Fi and I bet you it works better than the Wi-Fi they gave us punters. So would it, was it worth £180? On its own, definitely not. But you're not paying for what you get, you're paying for where you get. And let's face it, it's pretty unique to be on an actual working platform with trains just a couple of feet from your window. If that's your bag, baby, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant place to stay. Is it still worth £180? It depends on how much you love your quirky hotels or how much you love your railways. I do love quirky hotels and railways, but still £180 is the maximum. Absolute. It might even be above the maximum I would probably pay for something like this. Um, of course, if you don't like the price, you don't have to pay it, but £180 is a lot for what you get. Was it worth it? Ooh, pretty close to a no, pretty close to a no. It is expensive here. Right, I'm gonna have another cup of Taylor's coffee, coffee in a bag, and uh, by then I can stretch it out to about 8.30. I can start getting ready for the, the northbound train. I keep looking at this window, it's a brilliant view, amazing view, and I keep looking at that hill there, and how cool it would be to climb up there. I keep thinking of Red Backpack Man, who I saw a year ago, who just walked up there and disappeared. He knew where he was going, but um, at this time of the year, it's an absolute quagmire, but he seemed to know where he was going. If I was going to try and tackle that, I think I'd have to do some dead reckoning and just head for it and hope for the best, but boy, you'd get absolutely soaked. It's a Amazing scenery, absolutely amazing. Oops, I was just getting half packed and I heard a rumble and a southbound train went past and I thought, I didn't realise uh, there was a train. I thought the first uh, southbound train was the one I'm catching at 12.30 today. But no, no, that's what, 8.32, okay. <laughs> And it just went right past the window and I thought, oh, good job I was presentable. Uh, right, so 8.58 is a northbound Caledonian sleeper. Right, that train there explains the noise. Uh, next door there's a laundry room, which I showed you when I first arrived. That's where you can leave your bag once you've checked out. You can sit in there if you want to, it's nice and warm. Uh, if you're savvy, you can actually go up the stairs to the lounge. That's actually only for guests and not for just general train passengers. But if you're savvy enough, you can go up there and relax up there as well. But if you come to Carrer, the chances are you're going to be wearing uh, walking shoes or walking boots. And they're not the quietest of footwear. So you can always hear footsteps outside. And it usually happens up to about 30 minutes before a train departs. I could hear these footsteps and I thought, these people are very early for the Caledonian sleeper, but of course they weren't waiting for that. They're waiting for the southbound Glasgow train. Right, uh, in about 10, 15 minutes, I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna catch the Caledonian sleeper northbound. Can you see the hiker? I was just watching a lone hiker. He must have gotten off that train from uh, Fort William just then and he was just a little speck up on that hill and now he's vanished. I wonder where he's gotten to. He's disappeared. Sign hasn't been updated yet. It's a lovely day but it's a cold day. That wind is bitter. Oof. Wow, this is quite amazing, this location. According to the ScotRail website, the Caledonian sleeper is on time, so it should be here in about five minutes or so. He 
Here it comes, about five minutes early. It is cold out there. That is one cold wind. I was out there for 10 minutes and I couldn't wait to get back in again. Yeah. Well, two people got off the Caledonian sleeper. They stepped from their nice warm train onto the platform and you could see it in their faces. It was a shock to the system. Anyway, I'm going to check out of my room. I'm going to check out the breakfasts and I still have to be around for the 1121 northbound. That's the last of the seven trains and some might say the most important of the lot and you'll see why. Goodbye, room. If I'm away. Oof, that wind out there is bitter. I can handle about 10 minutes, then I have to find shelter. The 1121 northbound is running about three minutes late, but at least it is still running and that's the last of the trains I need to capture for this video. I was also speaking to someone in the cafe there about the nature of some of the paths, and they went for a walk yesterday along one of the paths that I gave up on, the boggy boggy one. He says, yeah, you have gotta put up with it for about an hour, then the track improves. And I thought, yeah, you could end up very wet and very cold walking along that. He did admit in some places you have to walk like 20 or 30 meters around the bog to get back onto the path. That doesn't sound like much fun, does it? Not in this weather anyway. Right, train is, like I said, a couple of minutes late. It's due in about 15 minutes. The seventh and final train on my list is due any minute now. How are you doing? Steve Marsh, how are you? We stayed here last night, how lucky is that? You I better go. I missed this train. Here's a gift from Carrara. Ah, <laughs> oh, you absolute legend. How Great was it? Bye. See you later. <laughs> That just goes to show you, you never know who you'll bump into at Britain's most remote railway station. Anyway guys, thanks very much for coming along and helping me tick this off my accommodation bucket list. And I'll see you next time.